All right, what do you have to know about compliance attestation? Well, when we think of compliance, we think of financial statements, end of the year, the need for an audit to comply with SEC requirements for an issuer. For a non-issuer, there is no SEC requirement to comply with for a financial statement audit, but plenty of non-issuers get audited, and they do so because they're complying with some entity that requires them to be audited, maybe a bank. Companies have different compliance issues. Some of these compliance requirements may not even involve the financial statements. For example, a CPA may be asked to provide assurance about an entity's compliance with specified requirements based on the law or based on a regulation or possibly because of a contract or a grant or maybe some rules that apply specifically to this organization because of the industry that they're in or because of a contract that they're about to sign. And that brings us into the world of compliance attestation engagements. For example, a very popular compliance attestation would have to do with Obamacare. When the Affordable Care Act passed back in 2010, companies suddenly had new laws and regulations that they had to comply with. And one of the rules was all full-time employees were suddenly eligible for health care benefits. They either had to be eligible for them or they had to be already receiving them if they were full-time employees. And there were many questions as to what constituted a full-time employee. Was it just an employee who worked a certain number of hours a week was full-time? And if they didn't work that many hours, they weren't full-time? Well, it wasn't that easy. And then what about companies that were commonly owned by the same parent? So this led to a lot of confusion and potential penalties if you weren't in compliance with Obamacare. So what did companies do? They desperately needed to comply. So they would hire CPA firms and engage in these compliance attestations. And it involved management making an assertion that, quote, the company is in compliance with Obamacare provisions as of this date for the six month period ending. And then the CPA firm would perform procedures regarding the responsible party's written assertion about compliance. The CPA performs these procedures and provides a report. Now, the standards that apply to these compliance engagements are SSAE, attestation. It's got it right in the title, Compliance Attestation Standards, SSAE. What does SSAE stand for? Statements on Standards for Attestation Engagements. So they will ask you what standards apply, and you'll say SSAE, Compliance Attestation Standards. Independence is required. These are not SARS engagements. Right? It's not accounting and review services, and it's not gas or peekaboo because we're not auditing financial statements. So what are we doing? In a compliance attestation, the CPA may perform an agreed upon procedures engagement or an examination. That's the only two choices, and the rest of this video will be dedicated to those two potential engagements, agreed upon procedures or examination. Note that the CPA may not perform a review regarding compliance. Briefly, the difference between the two, in an examination, the CPA is hired to provide an opinion on compliance because an examination is a high level of service and you're there to provide your opinion, your expertise. But this opinion is not considered a legal determination of the entity's compliance. And they love to ask you that on the exam. CPA just finished examining compliance provided an opinion. Is this opinion considered a legal determination of the entity's compliance? No, it is not. Okay, so examination, you're there to provide an opinion. What about agreed upon procedures engagement? Here, you're not hired to provide an opinion or give any assurance, but instead to report on the findings of the procedures that you performed. In both cases, you have to be independent. Because whenever attestation standards apply, the CPA must be independent. So there are some similarities in the two engagements, right? In the examination and the agreed upon procedures engagement, CPA has to be independent. But there's differences between the two engagements, and they will test you on the differences. And that's what this video is really going to focus on. All right, which of the following standards apply to agreed upon procedures engagements regarding compliance? 
And the answer would be what? Is it gas or peekaboo? No, because we're not doing auditing of financial statements. SARS, accounting and review services? No. SSAE. SSAE would be statements on standards for attestation engagements. Those are the standards that would apply to all agreed upon procedures engagements and also any examination engagement too would follow SSAE standards. So if this question would have asked which of the following standards apply to an examination engagement regarding compliance, it would be the same, SSAE. In a compliance attestation, the CPA may perform which of the following engagements? Examination, yes. Review, no. Agreed upon procedures, yes. So the answer is one and three, which is letter A. And that might be the only question they ask you on compliance attestation, is what type of engagements could the CPA perform? And for compliance attestation, you can perform an examination or agreed upon procedures, but not a review. Now, there are preconditions to these compliance attestation. In both an examination and agreed upon procedures engagement, management must accept responsibility for the entity's compliance with specified requirements and accept responsibility for internal control over compliance. So you'd have an engagement letter, and in that engagement letter, management must accept responsibility for the entity's compliance with specified requirements, that it's their responsibility to comply, and that they accept responsibility for internal control over compliance. And notice that applies to both engagements, the examination and agreed upon procedures. Now, if it's an agreed upon procedures engagement, management should evaluate compliance with the specified requirements or evaluate compliance with control over compliance. The CPA is not going to be providing any assurance. So after management accepts responsibility for both entities compliance and responsibility for internal control over compliance, if it's an agreed upon procedures engagement, management evaluates compliance with specified requirements or management evaluates compliance with internal control over compliance, one or the other, and the CPA provides no assurance. If it's an examination engagement, management should evaluate compliance with the specified requirements. CPA provides opinion on compliance with specified requirements. Notice the CPA does not provide an opinion on internal control over compliance. What about in an agreed upon procedures engagement? Is the CPA going to provide an opinion on internal control over compliance? No, not at all. So only the examination engagement does the CPA provide an opinion, and that opinion is on compliance with specified requirements. Notice that opinion is not on internal control over compliance. Because in a compliance attestation, the CPA's opinion covers compliance with specified requirements. The CPA's opinion is not on internal control over compliance in a compliance attestation. Let's try this question. In a compliance attestation, which of the following engagements requires the client to accept responsibility for the entity's compliance with specified requirements and accept responsibility for internal control over compliance? And if you think you know, leave me the answer in the comments section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps the channel out a lot. And if you need more help with compliance attestation or any part of the CPA audit exam, Go to cpaexamtutoring.com and get yourself on I-75, the number one CPA review supplement, where all videos are hosted by me, Darius Clark. And take I-75 to your next pass.